Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. While you're waiting, please take a couple minutes to download the handouts. One of them is today's slides, and I do mention capability statement in one of the slides, and our capabilities and training partner, Eileen Kent, has been kind enough to furnish three handouts for you. So grab those and hope you in, uh, enjoy the information it's going to give you. Let's get started. Those that join late, they'll be fine. They'll catch up. This webcast will also be available on our website later today. Hopefully, if I don't make any mistakes, it'll be available right away. Let's get started. We always have to start the day with the good news and the bad news. And this is a lesson that we should all learn. Mr. Rodney Earl Sandlin contacted me in July of 2014, had a GSA contract for two years, and had a notice of intent to cancel his contract for lack of sales. They had $51 in sales in two years because they had no idea what they were doing. The good news was they accepted credit cards. The bad news was they didn't have a capability statement. They had no training as to how to pursue government business. He hired me on the spot and we immediately contacted the contracting officer and asked for a three month extension. At the end of that first year, they had achieved almost $500,000 in sales, not because I know how to sell to the government, but because he listened to what we were saying and executed the plan perfectly. The following year, full year, they hit $2 million. The third year, they fell just short of $3 million. Now, that's great if you're selling multi-million dollar aircraft. But if you're selling building supplies, if anybody has ever gone to Lowe's or Home Depot, you'll notice that plug sockets are about a dollar a piece and fluorescent tubes are probably two to three dollars a piece. So it's very low volume, low priced items. So it's a pretty good job to get between two and three million dollars in a year. Unfortunately, Mr. Sandlin passed away on July 12th of this year, actually about three weeks ago. And I know being one of our better clients, we took it extremely hard. So I made an agreement with the surviving family that I would pay a tribute to him on my next webcast, which is today. Moving on, who am I? Those of you who have attended or watched our videos on YouTube or through our website, which takes you to YouTube, I am a service disabled Vietnam vet. I'm the oldest GSA consultant alive. In fact, there aren't that many folks working in the GSA program at GSA who have been doing it longer. I found one contracting officer that's been doing it 39 years. I've been doing it 32 years. and I'm gonna to jump to the bottom, experience matters. Why do I do this? Well, Earl is gonna to have to get added to this slide in the future, but I can describe it in one word. Michael Dell was my first client, and we all know how that story is continuing to move upward. So enough about me. What can you expect today? We're going to learn a little bit about what you must have and what you should have in order to be successful in the government marketplace. Some of the numbers I'm going to show you, you're not going to believe. And if you're guilty of it, shame on you. But we can help you get it straight. 
We're going to learn about government credit card acceptance and capability statements, web hosting, voice over IP telephone service. Nobody uses Ma Bell anymore because Ma Bell uses VOIP. More about that in the next slide. And we'll talk about a couple other things. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to type in your question or comment and we'll move on from there. Credit cards, one of my sore spots, and usually I show you a picture of the first credit card created in 1959 by IBM. It was a regular cardboard business card with a piece of magnetic tape taped to it. Hard to believe. Total SAM registrations, 650,000 plus. Number of companies not accepting credit cards as of nine o'clock this morning, over 400,000 of you do not accept credit cards. You cannot do business with the government unless you accept credit cards. It's mandatory. The link that says learn how here, could have probably used different language, but that'll work. That will take you to one of our partner companies that we've been working with for years. And actually they attended one of my webinars and educated me on the scams that are going on from the credit card merchant accounts, how they continue to nickel and dime you for money. For example, when you click on that link, you'll see M Bank Card <clears throat> out of uh, New England area. They charge a flat 2.1%. They don't charge you for a government credit card. They don't charge you for card not present. That can add about two to two and a half points on your 1.65 teaser rate that most of these companies say, yeah, we can get you down to 1.5, 1.6, whatever. And then we're going to hit you with a $10 a month statement fee. And we're going to hit you with this. And we're going to hit you with that. And before long, you're at four to four and a half percent. And I asked Kent, the owner of the company, I said, Kent, how can you not charge extra for card not present and government credit card? Actually, it's called government purchase card. I stand corrected. He said, the reason is the government never does a chargeback. I was not aware of that. So I learned something new and I've been in the credit card business since probably well into the mid nineties when we first started doing credit card processing over the internet. Let's talk about the capability statement. Hopefully you've downloaded the handouts. We work with custom keynotes. Eileen Kent is the owner. We send all of our clients to Eileen, because she does not only the capability statement, and by the way, those handouts have a couple samples for you. It also has a copy of her slides in PDF format for you to go through. Reach out to her. You must have a capability statement. Why? Does the government know you? If they don't know you, why would they buy from you? Two simple answers to one very simple question. If you want to discuss it, contact us. Actually, this slide, this slide was done before Eileen volunteered to furnish those documents. So please feel free to call her directly. You'll enjoy working with her. And for the record, she's the one that does most of the speaking and training at the GSA seminars for their employees. It's been around for a while. Like I said earlier, experience matters. Web hosting. Let's jump to the bottom. 650,000 companies. Only 3,500 of you have a website as of nine o'clock this morning. I looked at the, the field where it says website. One guy puts in one. Right below him, another one put in five. Well, 
if I really dig hard enough, I probably will never be able to find those two websites. You must have a website. The first thing that a government contracting officer looks at is your web reputation. Do you have an online presence? Facebook doesn't count. Twitter doesn't count. LinkedIn kind of counts. The first place they go is to your website. Along the same line, does your email address match your web address if you have one? If you send an email to me at marketus.com, it's the same as my website, marketus.com. It's the same as my business card, my letterhead, my envelopes. Everything matches. I don't care if you're working out of the trunk of your car. At least you have an image. Very important. Why do we offer this again? Back in the early 90s, we provided free web hosting and email to any of our clients, as long as they were a client. I had one company was with us four years. Finally, they got into a huge government contract and they started really generating a lot of revenue. They graduated from 8A and they installed their own servers because they needed secure for their contract. So unfortunately, we lost them as a client. The technology was not really was it, it stunk. It was lousy back then. Then we say to somebody, do you have a website? They say, yeah, we're working on it. Or they're working on it. Or any day now. What if you could get a website up and running in five minutes? This is your online reputation. We could get technical and get into the, well, now we need to worry about our search engine optimization, our Google Analytics, this, that, and the other thing. Oh, forgot one thing. We have to put on an SSL certificate. Google just put out a notification yesterday that rather than showing in the bar that your site is secure, they're only going to show it now that if it's not secure. You need to have a website. Feel free to contact us. We'll be glad to give you some free consultation on that. Voice over IP. I'll bet you didn't know this. Every phone call uses voice over IP. Your iPhone, your LG Android, any Android, any Windows phone, any phone at all, including cell, landline, even Skype. Most people don't realize Skype is pure voice over IP. And it's free for computer to computer because it's strictly using the internet. There's no cost involved, no charges involved. If you want to use Skype to contact a regular phone number, they give you credit and then they charge you whatever it is a month. I don't remember. We run our own voice over IP server. I'm getting ready in October to travel to Orlando to speak on voice over IP in the government for the company that created the electronic PBX. Digium bought Asterisk many, many years ago. You're probably familiar with uh, 8x8, which used to be Packet 8. You're probably familiar with Ring Central. You're probably uh, familiar with uh, Vonage. And I think uh, AT&T and somebody else had the same kind of thing before. It's voice over IP. We're on voice over IP right now. You're listening to me through the internet. Every call hits a tower somewhere and passes that call through the internet. And they've been doing it since telephones began right after ARPANET became the internet in 1995. On a landline, your local phone company called the central office or the CO passes that call right through the internet. Then it hits the next CO wherever that number is located, unless it's a cell phone, then it hits the tower. That's your crash course on voice over IP. We would be more than happy to counsel you on how to get into voice over IP, but let me give you the closer on it. 
I made the mistake when I went away from Ma Bell years ago to 8x8. I had a call center in Tampa. My phone bill was $540 a month. I finally got tired of writing the check. I said, there's got to be a cheaper way. I installed my own voice over IP server. It's called an ePBX or PBX, Private Brands Exchange. Found a trunk provider, lowered my phone bill to under $50 a month, and I've never looked back. Good, interesting information for you. Hopefully, hopefully you can use it. The services we offer, we've just gone over hosting, voice over IP consulting, but what I didn't get into because it's not required, you don't need it, but something that we are in the process of rolling out, learning management system. And I'd be interested in your comments and or emails. Questions would be fine also. What you would like to see in a learning management system to help you better penetrate the government. What do you need to learn? What do you want to learn? What do you have to learn? And if it's easy enough for us to put together, oh, not necessarily easy. If it's good enough and we have enough demand, interest, we'll put together a course on whatever, how to convert from Ma Bell to voice over IP. That'd be a good course to take. As far as consulting goes, those of you who are in a contract, whether it be soup or Oasis or anything else, we're available to be able to consult with you on how to best maximize your position on a team. More specifically, if you've got a GSA contract, we can definitely help you there. And you already have part of the answer is Eileen. I'd like to take any questions you've got right now. Don't be shy. It's only showing up with me. And we got our first one just came in. How long does it take to get a GSA contract? Well, you know, it's interesting because in 1988, seven, eight, I decided to not get into the open market world and stay strictly on GSA. Started the company in 1986. And if you look at our website and look at the references, you might recognize quite a few of the names. And it used to take 30 to 90 days, depending upon what discipline or federal supply class, for example, IT happens pretty quickly for obvious reasons. It's IT. If you're going to go for uh, law enforcement, you're looking at up to a year. They are so inundated because all the state governments are hammering on folks like yourself to get a GSA contract so they can use it at the state level. Also, investigative services, all of the things that can fall under law enforcement takes time and it's they're just so inundated because their shop is so small but they are cross training a lot of the contracting officers and contracting specialists to be able to handle multiple disciplines good question thank you let me read this question real quick Why use you instead of somebody else? I'm assuming me versus the four other companies that we know about and we are friends with. We're not the most expensive. We're not the cheapest. I can only say experience matters. Most of the time, I help my folks off the top of my head. And we've gone to everything online now. There's no more paper. All documents are signed electronically. At the end, as long as you have a contract, that's all that matters. And if you can get it done for 5,000 or 20,000, the question is, 
what value did you get other than filling out paperwork? I don't see a whole lot of my competitors doing this type of complimentary webinars, and I don't do them as often as enough. And I only have one excuse. I live in South Florida and it's sunny. So, and I'm old, so I don't work a lot anymore. I'm not trying to build a $10 million business. Those aspirations went out years ago. So we have a small shop. I control everything in the shop because I was trained by a gentleman who worked at GSA and wrote the policy manual for GSA with two other gentlemen back in 1983. So experience does matter. A lot of these other companies are excellent. They're good. They all have different methodologies on how they pursue and work with their clients. As long as it works, that's all that matters. There's room for everybody. There is no way that any one company could handle 600,000 plus companies that are registered to do business with the government. Where we offer the value is we offer the web hosting. We offer voice over IP cons consultation. We're rolling out a learning management system. Hopefully that answers your question. Next question came in. Excellent question, and that was going to be my first course on learning management, how to get a GSA contract step by step with everything you need to know. That is something we're thinking about doing. That one's going to be a little tough to do because there's so much to it and there's 41 different GSA contracts. The good news is of the 20 documents per schedule, probably 12 of them are the exact same document with just different headers. So it's something we're, we're working on. The plans are on the uh, whiteboard and it looks like spaghetti, but I think we can put it all together. Next question is, what will the cost be? Well, I had a friend of mine that sold nuts and bolts and welding supplies to garages up north. And he'd walk in to write an order at a garage and the garage manager would say, Brooke, what's this gonna cost? He already knew what it was gonna cost. He'd say, is 20,000 too much? He said, yes. He says, don't worry, it won't be that much. So I see a number here. Somebody's asking 49.95, as in 5,000. No, you have to hit a sweet spot with everybody that it's worth their time being totally automated to get the process done. There's homework that needs to be done. You do lesson one, then you've got to go do something and you come back for lesson two and so on and so forth. What do you think? Tell me what you think would be, let's just take GSA contract for example. What do you think would be a good fair price for you to do an online learning course on how to do your own GSA contract and save anywhere from five to $20,000? Got some answers coming in. Don't worry, you won't insult me. It's a matter of numbers, not one off. When I worked at Honeywell, they sold mainframes for $3 million. I worked in the mini and PC division and we were selling the same basic functionality of a mainframe for $10,000. That's what a PC used to cost back in the 80s. They couldn't understand why I was selling so many PCs and it would take them a year to sell one $3 million mainframe. I think you can figure that one out very quickly. That's why gum used to be a nickel at the checkout stand at the stores. It was kind of like, oh, I could take one of them too for only five cents, 10 cents, whatever. Now it's probably a dollar a pack, I don't know. We're getting numbers in here anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 which is a good starting point for us to look at, but I have no idea what it's gonna turn out to be. It's a matter of 
how much work we're going to have to put into it, and how fast we can get some test cases through the course to see if it's really worthwhile for us to put it together. Next question, please. Well, that's pretty much it for questions, but it looks like we're going to get out of here early. I always schedule an hour. I'm usually over an hour. There's my contact information, and if you don't feel like typing it or you already have it in the uh, PDF uh, slides, so probably the next slide is not that important because I generally use it for live presentations so that folks can QR code scan it. But I will leave you with a couple things. Here's some questions. These are hot links right back to our site. If you're thinking about a schedule, and this will be part of the learning management system, like in the very beginning before you even sign up for a course, do you qualify for a GSA contract? Those of you that have one, you know what you went through. You had to be in business two years, blah, 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 all that stuff. You had to be financially sound. You had to have good past performance evaluation through open ratings and all that. If you need help getting it done, that's another good link. And why does experience matter? Go ahead and read my bio. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you'd like also for a topic on another webinar. Thinking about uh, firing another one out this coming week, and we definitely appreciate you joining us. And if you're scanning with a QR code, there you are. I'll wait a minute or so and see if there's any other questions. And if not, we'll end the webinar. You hopefully all have your slides. I did see a couple of attendees that came in, got, got the handouts and took off, which is fine. The important thing is information dissemination. That's what we're looking at. Let's go back to that one. We appreciate you attending. Any questions? Visit the website or send me an email directly. And I believe GoToWebinar will probably send you a uh, survey at the end. Be truthful. Don't just say all tens just because that's what I want to hear. Be honest about it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending today. And uh, we hope to see you in our next webinar, which should be relatively soon. Thank you.